this road is loud. Uh, ooh, okay. Um, man, my brain feels like it's kind of all over the place. I don't know what I'm going to talk about in this video. Uh, well, let's start by saying that, um, hmm, <laughs> guys, I really don't know how to start this video. So this session was the first session where we tackled my biggest trauma, my trauma that affects my day to day the most. It is the trauma that I have the most consistent triggers. I had talked in my last video about how at the end of my last session, the last thing that popped in my mind at the ending of the session was Luna. And so I kind of assumed that we would jump into that at the next appointment. But then today, you know, she was looking over my paperwork and trying to decide what we would start in on. And um, I just told her that I don't know that I feel like I need to do work with Luna with that loss. Maybe eventually it would be nice just to kind of like gloss over it, for lack of a better word. But with that, I don't feel my negative or positive associations because while yes, I felt a little bit powerless because I put so much into it and didn't get the outcome that I wanted, um, I know that I did everything that I could do to keep her alive. I mean, the money, the resources, the time that we put into trying to keep her alive I did all that I could do. There was nothing else I could do. So there's, it just didn't, all of my other stuff, there are so many different emotions tied into it. There is, you know, guilt and confusion and hurt and um, anger and resentment. There's just so many different emotions ranging for all of the other traumas that I just didn't feel like we needed to necessarily go in on Luna. So we had decided that we were gonna start in on my biggest trauma because it's kind of playing out in my life right now. And I can't, I'm not gonna go into detail about that, but there are things that are happening in my life right now that are triggering. Things that are leaving me feeling vulnerable and, you know, anxious and worried. So, you know, just as a side note, I'm thinking I might do a full video on this later. And you can kind of go to my Instagram account and look at my latest post to see like just the the general message of it. But I did start on anxiety medication three days ago. So I'm actually feeling kind of nauseous in this video. Um, I started on that medication three days ago and you know that carries its own weight. I have feelings of I'm I have feelings of like defeat and I'm not gonna go into that here. The only reason I bring it up in this video is because I kind of have some concern about if it will help me or if it will actually hurt the progress that I'm making. And the reason I... So when you have anxiety and depression, you can have weird relationships with it, right? So with anxiety, sometimes my anxiety is a friend of a friend of mine because it allows me to feel really deep feelings and to really get in touch with myself and recognize the feelings the emotions that I'm feeling and allow myself to go there and do the work but you know it's also my enemy because it's all consuming and it it, um, it affects my life in negative ways and it helps to it controls my life in ways that I don't want it to so I became concerned today because starting in on this trauma, I felt very like, like almost numb to it. And I had to try and decipher if that was because of the medicine, because I feel less anxious, or if that is because that is my body's way of protecting myself. And I've kind of come to the conclusion, although I can't, you know, say it with 100% certainty, but that is the way that I protect myself. And today's appointment was the hardest in that, not in a way that 
two appointments ago, I was crying for an hour straight because I've talked about this before. But in that when I am dealing with really difficult things head on, I feel very uncomfortable. I feel very vulnerable and exposed. I feel I just don't like it. I deal with all of that myself. I work on it mentally in myself and I, I think I make progress within myself. But when I have to then go and talk about it with somebody else, or I guess now I'll try to work through it in such a deeply intimate, difficult way, I kind of shut down. And so I had a lot of that today. I had a lot of frustration with myself, with my brain, because I just, I had a hard time going there. In the first cycle, I had specific memories. You know, I felt all, I, I, my, my feelings ranged exactly how they ranged when I was going through the situation. So at first I felt like, just like really hurt. And then I felt um, angry and then I felt anxious. And then I felt, I just, I went through the emotions of that first session, the same emotions that I experienced when I experienced the trauma. Then in the second round, my brain just shut off. I had one memory and then my brain just went black, completely black, and I could not go anywhere. And I told her that I feel frustrated because I I just feel like I can't go there. I don't want to go there. Like I do want to go there because I want, you know, the treatment and I want to, um, I'm okay with recognizing the emotions, but my brain is not letting me go there. And she told me that is the brain's way of protecting itself. It doesn't want to put me back into a situation that was harmful to me. And then the third cycle was just like I've said in other videos, the third cycle was the exact opposite. So the second one could not tap into anything. The third one tapped into everything. And that's when I, you know, I started to cry. I started to really feel the emotions. I started, it started to hurt. It started to manifest in my body. My, my hands were really tense. My legs felt really heavy. My chest felt really heavy. So, um, and then the fourth one, again, I got really, I'm, I'm discovering that I have a lot of self judgment and I don't know where these expectations of myself have come from because nobody in my life has ever placed unrealistic expectations on me. I mean, my mom, super chill mom, like would do whatever I wanted to do. She ebbed and flowed with me. If I had one passion, she went with me, but for some reason, I just judge myself so harshly. And that last time I judged myself because I could hear everything going on. I had two memories. And then next thing I knew, I heard the other therapist in the office behind us. I heard the music on the Google Play far away. I heard like what sounded like a clock ticking sound. And I just, I had to keep like trying to pull it back and focus on what I was experiencing. So then I, I focused in on the buzzing, but then because I was focusing on the buzzing, my brain wouldn't go anywhere else. So that was really frustrating, but it was just another sign that my brain is trying not to go into the pain. I'm willing, my heart is willing, I want to do it, but my brain is just really putting up a wall and having a hard time going there. And that is why, as I've talked about many times before, EMDR is so unpredictable um, because you don't know how long it's going to take to break through. You have to be gentle with the mind and just take your time with it. And she asked me on the scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the worst, how disturbing the memories were. And I said it was a 10. And... At the end, she asked me on a scale of one to 10 how disturbing it was. And I said, honestly, it's still a 10 because it, it hurts. Um, and she said, I would be, I would have, if you would have told me anything but a 10, I would have said, mm, are you sure? Like, cause I think you're probably a 10. She says, I wouldn't expect you to be outside of a 10 at this point. Um, and then we did the scale one to seven, which that's, kind of backwards like one to ten ten is the most disturbing one to seven a seven means you've like reached the best the best so on a scale of one to seven how much do you feel like you can you you can recognize what you can control and what you cannot i said 
I was kind of bouncing between a one or a two, but ultimately I said a two because I don't feel like I'm in a victim mentality. And when I was in it, I didn't feel like I was in a victim mentality. Like I knew that if I wanted to be better, if I wanted to grow, if I wanted to make myself happier and healthier, I could, that was up to me. So I didn't feel completely powerless. So that's really disappointment. And I, I don't, like I said, I don't really want to share the details. I just wanted to share because I think it's important to see, you know, like after last week where I had such a breakthrough and I worked entirely through the problem and we moved on from that trauma, this week was a completely different experience. This week I really struggled to to tap in and to go there and to feel the emotions. And of course I'm thinking, you know, is she, I wasn't really thinking, is she judging me? But I was aware of what was going on with my body and my face. And is she watching me? Like, you know, my, my brain just wanted to go everywhere except for where it needed to be. So that was this week. Let me know if you want to see a video on you know, starting anxiety medication. I think I want to make a video anyways eventually just because there are symptoms that you can have when adjusting to it and I have noticed, you know, some changes. So I want to talk about that. If you guys want to see it sooner, let me know. Um, yeah, and I will see you guys in the next one.